Here we are, inverse functions. It's our intro series, and this is part three. What are we covering here? Well, we want to look at inverse functions from a graphical perspective. So we look at it graphically. We want to look at it algebraically. And we want to look at algorithms that allow us to understand the algebraic form of inverses and we'll look at what one of my colleagues called the shoes and socks algorithm. It's a really nice way of understanding what's going on with functions and their inverses. It doesn't always apply to everything as you'll see in rational functions and other examples, but it's so helpful and I'm, I'm really grateful that he showed it to me. All right, let's talk about the graphical approach first. So um, when you look at inverse functions graphically, inverse functions from a graphical perspective, from a graphical perspective, and I'll write, I'll just write graphically, from a graph, Graphically, I guess, means from a perspective of graphing. Um, I don't know if that's a good word to use here, but all right. Inverse functions graphically, it tells you that you are reflecting. So to, you reflect, you're reflecting. Reflection, what am I writing? Reflecting functions over the y equals x line, which means you switch points. This is a really unprecise definition, but it gives you the general idea. X, Y to their inverses to make it Y, X. Not y minus X. Y, X. Now, before we look at what all of this means, let's, let's just focus on this, this beautiful thing right here. That all you're really doing is swapping the x's and the y's and making it yx. And that's beautiful because it reflects the idea. I actually use the word reflect there. It, it, it reminds us of the idea that when you're going from a function, let's say the points here are in, in the function f, and you're going to its inverse here, you're switching the domain and the range. In other words, you're switching the x and the y, and we can see that here in the graph, which I love. I love when that happens, when you have uh, an idea translate from an algebraic definition into a graphical definition, or from any perspective you're looking at it, it all fits together. So the domain, which is x, in our original function is now the range of our inverse. The range of our function is now the domain of our inverse, and that is precisely what has been happening all along. So We've been looking at this exciting linear function. I see, um, okay, sarcasm is not helpful. Uh, this is our linear function, 3x plus 2. And if we graph the function, we're going to get, let's take a look at this. Um, here's 2, and we're going to get something like this. Uh, I think I can do, let's see if I can do, do, the slope is 3, so I'll go up 3. So here's 0, 2, and then up 1, 2, 3, and over 1 here. So this is my attempt to sketch. I have a line tool. Should I use it? No, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna just try to get the free hand. One, two, three, and over one. Something like that. Okay. So this is the function f. So the points that we have here are zero, two, and what? This is one, five. Well, to get the inverse, we just swap the x's and the y's. So we go to two, zero here. And then 5, 1, 3, 4, 5, and 1. And this would be the inverse right here. And that's reflected over the line y equals x, which is this line right here. It's like a mirror for these two functions. So the distance to that mirror in each of these corresponding points should be the same. Right? That's another definition there that we can follow. So we see that happening. And then um, we could look at this to derive essentially what the equation should be for this inverse and understand it algebraically. So let's do that. We have this point 2, 0, and this point over here 5, 1. So let's find the equation for the inverse of this function. And then we'll make some observations and define it algebraically. So the slope would be, what would that be? Rise 1 minus 0 over run 5 minus 2. 
5 minus 2. So 1 over 3. So it's a third. Ooh, I like that because it looks like 3, but the reciprocal. Maybe there's something to that. I'm going to write it in y equals mx plus b form. I'm going to solve it that way. And I already know that my slope is a third. don't know x and I don't know b. So let's solve that. An easy way to maybe figure out the b value or y-intercept is to plug in a point that you have here. I'll plug in 2, 0, and then you can solve for it. So I'm going to just write this over here. y, and we'll use y for the inverse for the output, is 1 third x plus b. We're going to plug in 2 for x and 0 for y. So 0 equals 1 third of 2 plus b. So it's 2 thirds plus something is 0. That has to be negative 2 thirds. Okay. So the inverse function of f is 1 third of x minus 2 thirds. And that's a little confusing. Okay, how does that correspond? Well, if I put these two fractions together, I get um, x, 1x, right, 1x minus 2 over 3. And that's really interesting because here is where we can start to understand functions and their inverses algebraically, right? This is, let me kind of cheat with my highlighter here and write like this equals, this is the inverse function. Well, if we look at the order of what's going on, we'll see that they are, one of them is undoing the other. In other words, everything that happens in the function f to x is happening in the opposite order in the inverse. In the original function, we take x, we triple it, and then we add 2. In the inverse, we take x, and instead of ending with adding 2, we're now subtracting 2 and then dividing by 3. So instead of multiplying by 3 and then adding 2, we're subtracting 2 and then dividing by 3. And this is where the shoes and socks analogy comes into play. Um, so this, I, yes, I'm going to draw a foot. And I'm going to draw socks and shoes because I think we should take our time here to think about this beautiful analogy. This is my foot. So when you are putting on your, sh your sh uh, socks and shoes, you do socks first, right? So here are socks, pink socks. You put them on, right? Here's my socks. Then what do you do with your shoes? You put your shoes on next. And I'm going to use this for my shoes. Here's my shoes. Okay, so think about that. The order was socks first, on, then shoes. Now you want to take them off. So you do the opposite operations now in the opposite order. Instead of shoes, then socks, and on and on, you do, you do shoes off first, you take them off, and then you take the socks off next. And then you're right back to the start. And that corresponds to our algebra here with f of x, our original function. We, we do tripling first, then adding 2. And I like to keep track of it like this. So first thing we did, second thing we did to x, all the way throughout. We're going in this order. First, we took take x and we multiply it by 3. And then we add 2. But now we're looking at the inverse function and we do everything opposite and backwards. So instead of shoes and socks, it's now socks and shoes. And instead of on, it's now off. So the first thing we'll do, we'll look at the last step of the original function. Now do the opposite of that. Instead of adding 2, we subtract 2, right? We switch the order and the operation. Then the second thing we do, well, go in the backwards order now here. And instead of multiplying by 3, we divide by 3. And that's what we do to x. We take x. The first thing we do is subtract it by 2. Then we have that, and we divide it by 3. And that is how the inverse works. It works in the opposite order of the function. And I'm not too happy with my layout here, but this is generally how I go about doing this. Now, this is not always going to work so nicely. There are many functions where this will not work. Okay, so what's another approach we can use? Another approach we can use, I like this one as well. You take f of x, in this case, equals 3x plus 2. I would rewrite it like this, y equals 3x plus 2. And then at some point, switch the x and the y, right? You're swapping the domain and the range. Now this right here is the inverse function. You're done. But then we typically isolate it in terms of y, subtract 2, divide by 3, right? x minus 2 divided by 3, which equals y, and that is the inverse function as well. 
So you can also swap the x and the y because functions in their inverse swap the domain and the, and the range of the functions. And this allows you to deal with any function, not, not just um, not just the the cases where the shoes and socks algorithm works. And the idea here is that you can essentially take x, run it through a bunch of operations to get an output, or you can reverse it and go backwards. You can deconstruct that process, and that's a really valuable tool in general. All right, thanks.